بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لهبة في الله أحيانا sometimes our brothers and sisters despair or feel that they're not living up to the expectations of Islam and they feel the difficulty from their families when they are uh, their families they come from non-Muslim families as many of us who have reverted to Islam or converted to Islam as you'd like to say that often there are times a person might feel lonely they might feel some despair but never ever despair at the mercy of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because as you have to realize or as you must realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has moved you min dhulamatil nur from darkness to light walau kari al-kafirun even if disbelievers hate it even if the munafiqun the hypocrites hate it that the fact is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you this is the whole reason that you have been blessed with guidance from darkness to guidance. Even if your life maybe before for some people was comfortable. It wasn't that everyone had difficulty. Not everyone came out of prisons and, and had a, um, or a low status in life. Some people had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed them with uh, secular knowledge and religious knowledge and all kind of people come from every, all walks of life to Islam. The point is, there was still darkness. There was still a type of darkness. And Islam gives you that light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to complete His light, regardless of what those people who oppose His light or who want darkness uh, want. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yuridun and Yutfiyun Nurullahi bi Him. They want to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. They want to extinguish the light. But Allah will complete His light even if the disbelievers hate it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance is still going to be given to the people. And we should never ever despair. And it is, with your iman you will always be tested. And especially in those early stages, you'll leave many activities you used to do. Some of us used to have uh, girlfriends. Some of us used to listen to music. Some of us used to do drugs and alcohol. Some of us used to do all of it. And we leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But does that come overnight? Or does it come in stages? Usually it comes in stages with sincerity and you build yourself. I know countless brothers and sisters who came to Islam and they still had their baggage and it took time for them to leave off the music and it took time for them to leave off their boyfriends and girlfriends and it took time for them to leave off the other activities that they did but then it came to a point one day in their iman that they said this is real this is real and I want to come closer to Allah and so they leave those ha activities. The point being, my beloved brothers and sisters, is we should never despair. And the Prophet wasallam said, Al-Mu'min Qawi Afdal Min Al-Mu'min Da'if Wa Fi Kullum Khayr Wa Kama Qala Nabi wasallam. He said the strong believer is better than the weak believer. But both of them have good. They all have good. So the fact that people are on different levels of their iman, and our iman fluctuates, the fact that a person is still praying, and they still believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're on khayr, they're on good. Because they have not left the darkness, uh, they have not returned to darkness of disbelief. And this is one of the signs of sweetness of Iman, as the Prophet ﷺ said in another authentic hadith, that uh, the three things that a, uh, a person, uh, those people who will be shaded or who have tasted the sweetness of faith, 
And one of them is a person who has been guided to Islam and hates to return to Kufr. So that means that they have Iman. What's going to help us not despair? What is really, truly, and I promise you, because this is in my own life I've seen it, as someone who has tasted both uh, lifestyles, that one thing that has kept me Muslim over the years, especially as, uh, and, and kept me on some sort of istiqamah, even with all my sins and all my shortcomings, may Allah forgive us and you, ameen, is talab al -am. And I promise you, there is nothing as great as seeking knowledge. This is why I have these books. Not because these books, uh, because I've read all of these books, or I know all of these books, but these books for me is what keeps my Islam alive. Reading the Qur'an strengthens your Iman and understanding the Qur'an and, under, and, and reading the Sunnah and going through those books, those books that, that the books of Ahl Sunnah, the Imams of Ahl Sunnah, this will help your Iman in your heart because when you are alone and when you do not increase your Islamic knowledge, it is as if your heart is getting covered and covered because you're alone. Another thing that will help you, and especially it's related to what we just said, seeking knowledge, is having husna suhbah, is having good companions. People who will call you and remind you to the khayr. People will remind you that they are also your family. You have your blood family. You have your blood family that it may not be Muslim, and you should treat them kind and respectful, and especially your parents, and loving, and show them that you're a better person than you were before. But the love and the companionship of being with the believers is something alim, is something great. It's something that will help you too, especially if you're around choosing companions that will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will encourage you to do talib al and that will bring you benefit. Meaning that whenever you, you get together, you're reminding one another of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way. I have companions, some of them, they have aspects of jahili, as we all do. But... What I can honestly say about all my companions, all my Muslim companions, I can't think, they wouldn't be my companions otherwise. All of us, every time we talk on the phone, every time we see one another, every time we go to the gym, every time we go hiking, every time we go whatever we do, every time we go to Starbucks, there's a hadith mentioned. There's a, a benefit about one of the ulama. There's some fawaid coming from here. There's something that strengthens our Iman. There's a beautiful reminder. We go to the gym, the brother's talking about, Akhi, I heard this hadith. Uh, Nuh, alayhi salatu salam, went through this. Ayub, alayhi salatu salam, went through this. So you have to have good companionship. And the best companionship is those people who are better than you in knowledge. Or at least going to remind you of khayr. And the best companionship there too is if, of course, you can seek knowledge from the ulama. Because you, even the students of knowledge, I mean, there are good students of knowledge and people have wara and taqwa, no doubt, la shak. And we all have different levels. But if you can sit with the ulama, the scholars, this is something that increases your iman. Even if you're doing bad, even if you're feeling weak, you will leave that gathering if you're sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you love the ilm. When you're hearing, you're learning new benefits from about, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about how to practice your Islam. That strengthens your Iman. Likewise, or otherwise, if you're unable to do that, but you at least have some students of knowledge that you can occasionally sit with, or an Imam, something. But trust me, what is going to help you and give that ikhlas with the bat and help you, because it's not overnight, it's continual. All of us. It's continual. Sometimes you feel very weak. Sometimes the shaitan says, why go to the masjid? Sometimes the shaitan says, why, why go to the books? Shaitan says, do this, be lazy, sleep in, uh, you know, do this haram, watch this, involve yourself in this. So that's never going to end. But it's how you 
manage that, how you strive to succeed, how you, when you commit sin, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go back to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go back to that guidance, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so make kathra to istighfar, always try to seek forgiveness from Allah, because that's easy. As the Prophet sallallahu let us know that one of the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, you know, a group of the companions, that they have wealth and they're able to spend in sadaqah and charity. We, we don't have anything. What can we do, Ya Rasulullah? They, they're better than us. They're going to always be better than us because they have money. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let, the, let them know what, what is heavy on the scale. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wallahu akbar. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. Make a dhikr of Allah This is one of the greatest things you can do. So if you do this, and you can do this without money. You can do this when something bad has happened to you. You can do this when something good has happened to you. You can good do this when you're on the way to somewhere. You can do this on your return. You can do this in your room. You can do this with and without wudu. That's easy. And that's going to strengthen your iman along with seeking knowledge, and along with good companionship. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lil-ikhlas wa thabat. May Allah bless us all with sincerity to Him and firmness on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and firmness on the sabir as-salaf as-salih. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم